What's up guys? I know it's been a few days since my last video, but I've been super, super busy trying to convert the harness on my E36 so I can use my new standalone ECU computer. The computer comes with a plug and play adapter, but I did not have the correct harness in my car. So I've been converting the Vanos harness into non-Vanos harness configuration so I can use a plug and play feature of this awesome new computer. This is what I've been working on for the past few days. This is the engine harness for my E36 drift car. This will be an M50 Vanos harness. I've been repinning the whole harness, changing ground, shield wires, different signals and stuff so I can make it work. With my brand new standalone engine management system provided by ECU Master USA. This right here will be my new standalone. Comes with this nice packaging, white box inside. And you have your label for warranty information. You have a cool ECU Master sticker. This is very important. They have a paint out diagram for the computer plugs. So you have like the black plug is all on the top side, what everything is for. Then you have the gray plug and it has everything like this. The computer itself is super tiny. As you can tell, it fits inside my hand, even though my hand's pretty big, but uh, like it's almost like cell phone size. Check it out. It's literally the size of my cell phone. It has these nice heat sinks on it. Also, the way that it holds down, you just put a bolt through here and just bolt it to the car wherever you want it. Preferably away from heat sources, and any place that will get damaged, you don't want to like kick it around or anything. That's a built-in map sensor. This will be the plug for the computer, so you can connect your laptop and program the computer this way. With all of the features available from this computer, I can run any configuration that I want on my car and more. This is a super powerful yet tiny computer that can do everything the leading standalone computers can do nowadays and more. It comes with the plug so you can make your own harness, but in this case I got a plug and play harness, which I had to replace this plug because the harness comes with a, the plug for the older computer, which is not the model that I have. I have a EMU Black, which is our top of the line computer, and the plug and play harness is made for the regular EMU. But they provide you with everything. They have all kind of pins and stuff. Even these things are, whenever you're not using a, a pin, you just plug the hole so you have a waterproof seal. These are also resistors. Depending on what coils you're using, you may have to use these resistors to make it work with your ECU. They have the data cable, which is just like your phone cable, standard, that's just mini USB cable. This will be the plug and play adapter, which has the BMW plug. Um, it already comes with these two plugs right here, what I was telling you earlier. This is the black plug and the gray plug, but my computer uses this bigger black plug, which has more pins. So I'm still in the process of rewiring the plugs to the bigger plug so I can use it with my computer. Also, I have to wire this external cable for power since my computer doesn't supply that or it's not through the pins. So since I am running the wrong wire harness with this plug and play adapter, I have to modify my harness for it to work. But if you have an M50 non vanos car, it's, it will plug and play and work right off the bat. This will plug like this. Very nice connections. You just like put them on, slide this clip in. And it locks in place. Same thing with the gray connector. And you have a secure connection now. It should look like this. Then to this, you can connect the wire harness, goes right in it, like this. There we go. So now, after I'm done, you got the ECU, you got the adapter harness, the ECU adapter plug. And this will be the stock harness going to the engine. 
Uh, it's still not finished. So I have the wire cover right here, which is the power locking mechanism for the plug. It's not attached until I'm done with this. I'm still wiring up extra sensors, which will be these right here. I have a ethanol content sensor, which is the flex fuel sensor. This will allow me to run E85 and 93 on the go. So this measures the content of ethanol in the system. So you don't have to change tune or change maps when you're gonna replace the fuel from 93 to E85. It literally detects the content of ethanol and adjusts right away. It's really handy to have this. This will be the air intake temperature sensor. Um, the, the car does have one already, but this one is more precise and has the right frequency for the computer. It has this nice bung here, which I will be welding to my intercooler piping. Has a plug and thread sealant for it. Then very importantly, I have my wide band sensor. It comes with everything. I also have heat shielded wiring, nice plugs, weatherproof connections. Also has the pin so you can make your own harness for it. Or maybe this one can all extend all the way to the computer in this case. This one will be uh, Bosch 4.2. You can also use the other one. This computer allows you to run the 4.2 and the 4.9. These are, they also provide the wiring configuration so you can wire it up to the ECU. This 10 bar pressure sensor will be in this case my oil pressure sensor. Also very nice, it has a connection. It, it uses five volts reference. Uh, I'm, wiring, I'm currently wiring that up which is one of these wires right here, thanks this one. Yeah, oil pressure. And then I have two other ones running to that and making the conversion over there. But this one will go. I've already made a port on my engine right there, which is gonna be at 1 8 MPT fitting, teed off from the line that's gonna go to the turbo. That originally was the line going to the vanos, so I decided to use that. But they sell little adapters, you can put them right here where the factory oil pressure sensor goes. I did not put it where the factory oil pressure sensor goes because it's a different thread pattern and I do not have an adapter for this. Up next we have the boost control solenoid. You can't run big boost without this baby right here. They make their own sensor, wholesalehorsepower.com and they have also a nice, they also have a nice harness for it with the dedicated plug so you can make your own little nice wiring harness for it and have a clean install. This right here will be one of the most important things that I have for this kit. This will be the ECU Master Data Logger, it's EDL1. It, no, it's not only a data logger, but it's also a Bluetooth interface. The reason I got this is so I can run my tablet as my digital display. With that, I can use my tablet as my digital gauge display. These are all customizable. This right now is like a demo mode because it's not com because it's not connected to the computer, so I can't run any numbers on this right now. As you can see, you can have RPMs, battery voltage, or pressure. There's different things. There's different configurations that you can use. Uh, make it bigger. I think you can also put actual like analog gauges on this. I'm not sure. I haven't really gotten a chance to play with this yet. Now you can see why I have left the intake manifold in a previous video unbolted because I needed to remove it so I can install the harness. Guys, one very important thing, the Big Boost shirts are back in stock. Uh, I know that we're out for a little bit, but we have all sizes available right now for the version two. The version one, I know some of you guys want it, but it is discontinuous so we won't be selling those anymore. Uh, whatever we have left is what's on the website, but I don't know if there's any plans of like making it again. Maybe we'll make a version three later on, but I'm not sure yet. Hopefully tonight I will be able to finish the wiring harness from my car and attempt to start it. It will not be in this video because I still have a few hours more to work with that wiring harness left. I still need to paint the white door that I got for this. The door lock finally came in the mail, so I can, so I can proceed to install that and finally have a door. I have to weld the tabs so I can finally put the sun back in and seal it. And as far as for the rear end, I finally got my bushings and reinforcement plates so I can finally take that off and reinforce the rear end so it doesn't crack. Yes, you heard me right on BMWs, they're great handling cars, but when you're gonna go 
hardcore racing with these cars, you need to reinforce the rear end, which means the mounting points for the soft frame, the trailer arm mounting points, and the rear shock mounting points also have to be reinforced. If you don't do that, they actually do crack and you can like just break your car that way. Then either it will be really difficult to replace or your car is no good anymore. So to prevent that, I will be installing reinforcement points and taking care of everything on the rear end so I have a solid drift car. With that being said, I will end this video now. I really want to get this car going. I have only like a few days to finish it. So if everything goes right, I will be able to start this car tonight and I'll be able to finally have an awesome video of how this car sounds. I really can't wait to see what it sounds like and most of all, I want to be able to drive it already. Maybe. If everything goes right, I'll be able to bring it to Orlando Speed World this Saturday. Not to drive drifting, but at least I can drive it to the track and I can make an appearance. I'll definitely be at that event. If you guys want to come hang out, I'll be attending. It's called Summer Slide Fest. It's going to start at 4 in the afternoon. If you guys want to hang out, I'll be over there. I might actually bring some shirts down, so I'll be selling some shirts at the event. Feel free to come by, don't be shy. I, I really like hanging out with you guys. Hopefully I'll see you guys there on Saturday. But now I gotta get back to work and finish this wiring harness. I'll see you guys tomorrow.